Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new Pokemon TCG video. Today we have a very special challenge and I'm going to be doing a collaboration video with another YouTuber. You guys may have heard of him, his name is Pokédex and I'll be providing a ton of links in the description section down below so be sure to check those out for Pokédex deck build, um, my deck build as well, our battles, our two different points of views and things like that so there will be a ton of links in the description section down below again be sure that you guys check it out and uh, just to explain to you guys what today's deck challenge is is that we are building a one of a kind deck meaning that we can only include one of a single card uh, in our entire deck. So for example, I can only run a single copy of the Shaman EX. I can't run more than two copies of a single card. So it's actually been a pretty tough challenge. But anyways, this is the deck that I came up with. So number one, we have Shaman EX. Uh, it has the setup ability. I felt like it was kind of nice just because uh, it's kind of hard to get all the supporter cards that you need, but you can only run a single Juniper, a single Anne, and a single Colorist, for example. So I had to add in a whole ton of supporter cards that I typically wouldn't use. Shaman EX sort of uh, functions as a makeshift supporter card. So I decided to run a single copy of him in our deck. Number two, we have the Darkrai EX with the Dark Cloak ability. This will allow each of our darkness Pokemon, well, each of our Pokemon that have any darkness energies to be able to freely retreat. Its Night Spirit deck is also pretty powerful. I mean, I never really realized how useful of a Pokemon Darkrai EX could be, usually given the fact that the Evil Tool EX overtakes it as an attacker of the deck, but it, this is a very solid attacking Pokemon, so Darkrai EX, uh, probably going to see a bit of action as well. Uh, our next Pokemon is, of course, going to be the Evil Tool. It has the Oblivion Wing attack, which is ideally what we'd like to focus on using. Allows us to retreat any discarded um, Darkness Energy cards and then latch them on to any of our Pokemon. Again, keep in mind, I'm only running a single copy of each of these cards, so this might actually be a pretty long decklist video. The next card that we have up is the Evil Tool EX, of course. Uh, this was ideally the Pokemon that I would have liked to make the main attacker of our deck. But of course, I'm only restricted to a single copy of him in my entire deck, so uh, chances are he's probably not going to see a whole lot of action, but whenever he does, uh, he will be a very powerful Pokemon, allowing us to potentially get a couple of knockouts. Uh, moving on to our next Pokemon is going to be a Pikachu and a Raichu line. Now, the reason that I decided to include both Pikachu and Raichu is because in case our opponent decided to run a Pyroar, uh, luckily for us, he is only restricted to a single copy of Pyroar in his entire deck, but nonetheless, Nonetheless, in case our opponent uh, decided to run Pyroar, I felt like it was nice to have a Pokemon that would be able to take care of Pyroar, and Raichu does a pretty good job of that, so that's why I decided to include a 1-1 one -one line. And I also think that our opponent is probably going to run an Evil Tool EX deck, I mean, uh, that's uh, pretty much what I decided to go to right away, just because Evil Tool EX is such a powerful Pokemon, and really easy to fit in with a lot of different types of Pokemon, so Raichu could be there, we could definitely take advantage of its uh, typing uh, can also be useful in taking down Mega Rayquaza EX if that's what we see our opponent running. Moving on to the next Pokemon we have Jirachi EX. Again just another Pokemon that functions quite similarly to that Shaman EX will allow us to grab a supporter card from our deck and then put it into our hand so that's why Jirachi EX is there for us. We also have Mewtwo EX another very powerful attacker uh, has both the X Ball attack and the side drive attack. We're not really going to be using side drive. We're not running any side kick energy cards in our deck. X-Ball on the other hand um, is pretty much like Evil Ball's, uh, the Evil Ball attack from Evil Tall but it's a little bit weaker but nonetheless Mewtwo EX is a very solid Pokemon so we are running a single copy of him. Our next Pokemon is Demuna with the long distance hypnosis. Now it may seem a bit like a counterintuitive Pokemon because it could potentially put our own Pokemon to sleep but I've also included the Caldeo EX in our deck so um, ideally Muna would work when we have both the Darkrai EX and the Caldeo EX on our bench. Muna can then use its special ability in case we happen to flip a Tails. Caldeo EX will rush in and then we'll retreat to bring out another one of our Pokemon. So hopefully there's not any sort of real consequence because I'm not actually running any version EXs in our deck. Now our next Pokemon is another evolution line. So it is the Clam Pearl and the Huntail. Huntail has the powerful storm attack. I'm actually running uh, some water energy cards in our deck. So powerful storm is... Um, 
a very solid attack. We're probably going to have a whole lot of energy cards latched onto our bench Pokemon, so it could allow us to get those big one-hit knockouts on EX Pokemon. And, of course, the main reason for its inclusion, just to take care of Pyroar in case we need an anti-Pyroar counter. Uh, Huntail is, of course, a water-type Pokemon, so it should be relatively easy for it to get rid of the Pyroar in a single attack. And I believe this is our last Pokemon. It is the Caldeo EX, has the Russian ability, will allow us to, again take advantage of Muna's special ability and just allow us to switch in between our Pokemon. Of course, we don't even need Muna to make Caldeo EX effective. All it really needs is a Darkness Energy card, and then we can just freely retreat in between our Pokemon. So, that's just another nice, useful uh, purpose to the Caldeo EX in our deck. Uh, sorry, uh, the last Pokemon, I think, is the Seismitoad EX. Uh, has the Quaking Punch attack. We can also potentially make use of that green Grenade Hammer attack, so I have included some Water Energy card. Seismitoad EX is just a very disruptive Pokemon, so we are running a single copy of him in our deck as well. And uh, yeah, so with that, we're going to go and move on to the, the item cards that we have. So starting off, we have Acrobike, allows us to look at the two top cards of our deck and put one of them into our hand. Just a bit of a draw supporter card, felt like it was nice to include, so we are running a single copy of that. We're running the Bicycle, another draw supporter card, allows us to draw cards until we have up to four in our hand so bicycle is another pretty cool card our a spec card is going to be the computer search uh, we have just such a wide variety of different cards that computer search is almost always going to be a very useful card so that's the a spec card that i decided to go with thousand machine would be another very useful card because we have a whole ton of different types of uh, both supporter and item cards but uh, I decided that I would go with the computer search instead. Uh, we have a dive ball because we're only restricted to a single copy of Ultra Ball. So uh, we are running a single copy of the dive ball. will allow us to grab our Caldeo EX, our Seismitoad EX, and our Clamperl and Huntail. So actually pretty useful. Uh, so we are running a single copy of that in our deck. We also have the Energy Switch card. Um, this was mainly to help power up the uh, Evil Toll EX a little bit earlier if we possibly could. Because ideally, whenever I would use the Ultra Ball, uh, Evil Toll EX would probably be the first Pokemon that I'd be grabbing out. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Energy Switch can be useful with respects to a whole lot of our other Pokemon. So we are running a single copy of that. We're also running a single copy of the Enhanced Hammer. You know, just put in a little bit of Energy Disruption in there. Also f nicely fills a gap of a card. I felt like at one point I was just sort of putting cards in there uh, just to fill the 60 card limit requirement. Uh, we have the Escape Rope, forcing both the opponent and ourselves to switch our active Pokemon with one of our bench Pokemon. This can actually function as a of a makeshift Lysander because we're only restricted to a single copy of both the Lysander and the VS Seeker in our deck so Escape Rope is there can make our life a little bit easier. We also have the Pal Pad which will allow us to shuffle two supporter cards from our discard pile into our deck. I have to say that this is actually a really really nice card to include because it can allow us to get those very useful supporter cards back into our deck, such as the Lysander, for example, and Junipers, things like that. So we are running a single copy of that. We also have the Professor's Letter, because we do have some variability with respect to our energy cards. We have both Water and Darkness energy cards. So uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that we can only have up to one type of any single card, with the one exception being a basic energy card. So we can actually have um, more than one Darkness energy card, for example, more than one Water energy card, more than one Lightning energy card and so on and so on however we did also put a restriction on special energy cards so we're actually only allowed to have a single um rainbow energy for example a single double colorless energy a single plasma energy things like that so basic energies were the only ones that were really exempt from our uh one limit rule Moving on to our next card, guys, we have the Sacred Ash, which will allow us to shuffle some of our important Pokemon from our discard pile back into our deck. Again, just another useful card, so we are running a single copy of that. We have Trainer's Mail, which will allow us to look at the top four cards of our deck, grab one of them out, and then put them into our hand. Again, can be pretty useful, especially since our deck is a bit of a mess, I would say. Just a whole ton of different types of cards in there, so Trainer's Mail is absolutely going to come in hand 
come in handy more often than not. We have, of course, the Ultra Ball, a single copy of that. Uh, will allow us to grab any of the Pokemon that we need, so a pretty useful card. We are running a single copy of that. VS Seeker as well. Don't really think I need to explain it. Just will allow us to reuse one of our supporter cards that we have in the discard pile. We have the AZ. Uh, will allow us to return one of our badly damaged Pokemon back into our hand. So AZ can be quite a useful card. The Bianca as well. It's a draw supporter. I almost never use this card uh, just because it's not really a great draw supporter card. It will allow us to draw cards until we have up to six in our hand. So this is pretty much a Shaman EX with a supporter card restriction. So uh, Shaman EX is just such a nice card because we can run a whole ton of them in our deck and they don't actually waste our supporter for the turn. Uh, that's why really we don't see a whole lot of Bianca for the most part. But uh, in this type of deck it may actually come in handy. It's just nice to have a lot of draw supporters. So Bianca is going to be one of them. We have the Charon which will allow us to draw three cards. Again another draw supported card that you guys don't really see me use a whole lot. But when we're restricted to only a single copy of each draw supporter, uh, Charon actually tends to come in a little bit handy. We've also got the Colrus. Again, another draw support. I feel like the next uh, couple of cards that I'll be discussing are simply draw supporters. Uh, sorry, with the Lysander, of course, making its way in there. Just a very, very useful and powerful card will allow us to uh, switch out one of our opponent's bench Pokemon and then bring it into the active slot. So Lysander is just a really, really nice card to have. So we are running a single copy of that. We have the N. Once again, another of our draw supported cards. Definitely one of the better ones that we are running in our deck. Uh, the Pokemon Center Lady will allow us to heal off a little bit of damage from one of our badly damaged Pokemon and also removing special conditions attached to one of our Pokemon so it's actually a pretty cool card we are running a single copy of that Pokemon fan club uh, again the only two balls that I decided to include in our deck were the dive ball and the ultra ball so Pokemon fan club is actually going to come in handy as well will allow us to grab two Pokemon as opposed to a single one. So it's actually a pretty useful card. We are running, of course, a single copy of that. The Professor Birch's Observation, once again, another draw supporter with a bit of a flip coin requirement. Professor Juniper, another card that I really, really need to discuss. Uh, we've also got the Shauna, which is uh, like a Professor Birch's Observation, except uh, we're always going to be forced to draw onto five cards. Professor Birch's Observation can be a little bit risky if we flip eight tails, but it can also be fantastic if we manage to flip eight heads with it. But uh, Shauna is there for us as well. We've got a Skyla. Skyla is actually a pretty useful card. Again, kind of like a trainer's mail, but it gives us access to our entire deck and we can draw onto any one of those trainer cards that we need. So Skyla is actually a pretty useful card. We are running, of course, a single copy of that. The teammates card, in case any of our Pokemon do happen to get knocked out, we can look for any two cards in our deck. Uh, pretty nice supporter card. Card. We are, of course, running a single copy of that. We've got a copy of the Zorasic, which will allow us to either target a Pokemon tool card or a special energy card on either our own Pokemon or our opponent's Pokemon. So Zorasic can be pretty useful, especially if we come across a Garbodor, for example. Um, it will, of course, allow us to target uh, a... Yes. Sorry, a Pokemon tool card latched on to that Garbodor can also allow us to get rid of a special energy card attached to one of the opponent's Pokemon. We've got the Rough Sea Stadium card. This is just for our Seismitoad EX. Um, sorry, let me go back to that. Uh, for both our Seismitoad EX, our Huntail, and of course that Caldeo EX. I think I'm only running a total of two Stadium cards in this deck. So Rough Seas being one of them, the other one being the Shadow Circle, of course, for the Darkrai EX. The Evil Toll and the Evil Toll EX, mainly uh, Shadow Circle will prevent them from having having any weakness whatsoever. We've got the Float Stone. This is mainly to be used in combination with the Caldeo EX, but if a Caldeo EX already has a Darkness Energy card latched onto it, and if we already have the Dark Rai X, we can definitely attach Float Stone to another one of our Pokemon simply for that free retreat. Uh, we've got a Hard Charm to make it a little bit more difficult for the opponent to be able to knock out any of our Pokemon will give a little bit of insulation to our Pokemon. We've got the Muscle Band increasing the total damage output of the Evil Toll EX, hopefully, um, also to a lot of our other Pokemon, Huntail potentially, our Mewtwo EX, Muscle Band is just a really nice card to include, so we are of course running a single copy of that. We've got Silver Bangle, this only works to our, uh, when it gets attached to our non-EX Pokemon, but still it is, uh, it functions kind of like a Muscle Band, but it increases the total damage output by 30. We've got a few non-EX attackers in our deck, one of them being Raichu, another one being the Huntail, and of course the other one being the Evil Toll, so Silver Bangle can definitely be a useful card to include. We've got Headringer, 
a disruption type card to make life a little bit more difficult for the opponent. Uh, our opponent would of course need some additional energy cards to be able to attack with their EX Pokemon. So Headringer is pretty useful. We are running a single copy of that. We've also got the double colors energy. So I feel like that's pretty. We're coming towards the end. We are only running a single copy of the double colors energy, of course, because that is the restriction with special energy cards. We've also got a rainbow energy card in there. Again, just because we're running two different types of Pokemon, uh, one of them being water Pokemon and the other one, of course, being darkness Pokemon. So rainbow energy could be useful with respects to that. I believe I had a total of six darkness energy cards in our deck. So there we have it six darkness energy cards and four water energy cards and that is pretty much the entire deck build guys so with that i'm gonna go and find ourselves an opponent which we already know who that opponent is going to be again it is going to be pokedex this is the one of a kind deck challenge so i really really hope that you guys enjoyed again this is a collaboration video that i am doing so uh yes yeah, so i'll see you guys shortly again be sure to hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe button, and leave us your comments in the comment section down below. Be sure to check out the links in the description section down below as well for all the different types of uh, videos that you guys can expect. And yeah, that's going to be it. So I'll see you guys shortly.